Welcome to Issues and Answers. I'm your host for today, Jacques Hingson Compton. I'm here with former Speaker of the House of Assembly and former President of the Senate, Dr. Hilda Rosemary Husbands Mathre. She is currently the Parliamentary Commissioner, and today she's here with me to talk about the work of the Office of the Parliamentary Commission. Good day. Good day to you, and thank you for your invitation to talk about the role of the Parliamentary Commissioner. And thank you for being here. Now, we have a, a lot to talk about. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people may not be familiar with the role of Parliamentary Commission uh, Commissioner. So let me ask by asking you to explain what is the, the role of the Parliamentary Commissioner? What, is, what does he or she do? Okay, let me just start by a, a little understanding of what or who is the Parliamentary Commissioner. Mm. The Parliamentary Commissioner is an officer of the Parliament appointed by the Governor General, independent of government, independent of parties. The Parliamentary Commissioner is intended, expected to be an impartial investigator. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the Parliamentary Commissioner? The Parliamentary Commissioner receives and investigates complaints of the public, of citizens, about any maladministration act of government or any department, ministry, any institution that is funded by government, if the citizen feels that he, she has been aggrieved, has been badly treated, and needs some sort of resolve or solution to the, the problem. Uh, you mentioned uh, mal um, administration. What, what sort of issues uh, come up? When we talk about, we talk about bad administration acts. I mean, you can well imagine that with a big organization like government, one would think that there would be shortcomings, that there would be things that are done, not necessarily deliberately, but actions of ministries, departments, where people suffer some injustice. And so these sort of things, people come to the office of the parliamentary commissioner to complain. Um, listen, I feel that, um, for instance, government has now a development on a hillside and there are no drains and I'm living at the bottom of the hill, and I, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is not something that probably is deliberate, but certainly a citizen is at an, a disadvantage. So, um, would come to the parliamentary commissioner's office to investigate. So, the parliamentary commissioner would, as, as I just said, would investigate and go to the relevant department, go visit the site, see the problem, um, speak with the ministry, the relevant ministry involved, and see how we can solve the problem. The Parliamentary Commissioner's Office is really meant to improve the workings of the public sector. So it's not a job that's against the government at all. It's really meant to improve and, uh, the efficiency of government. Can you talk about a little bit of the advantages of coming to a, a Parliamentary Commissioner? Well, I believe... Um, sometimes getting to the relevant ministry or department of government that the citizen is not necessarily so very ac accessible. Yeah. Um, so sometimes one would find a citizen wanting to complain or talk about something, and the minister is not accessible. Mm -hmm. Neither is the PS, neither is the deputy PS, and the person who the desk would receive would receive you is not equipped with the relevant skills to investigate. So a parliamentary commissioner, an ombudsman, I should say, the ombudsman of the public service, that is the desk where citizens have a free service to come to someone who can attend to them and get do that kind of contact with the relevant 
um, department or ministry and say, listen, we have to attend to this. We have to attend to that. And actually, when the parliamentary commissioner investigates, the following action is a recommendation, a mm -hmm. recommendation to the relevant department. Now, I, I say recommendation because really that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And so if there is, for some reason, it's not attended to, the parliamentary commissioner can insist, can whatever, but it's really a recommendation to the relevant department. But, so the, the office of the parliamentary commission itself has no power to, to make any changes? To make the, it happen, mm -hmm. no. We actually work with the, the relevant ministries to smooth out these little things that... Um, government may have had no time to attend to, didn't realize these were the consequences, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, a way to help government improve its efficiency in dealing with matters of public. So, um, I mean, if you look, if you read um, on anything about the ombudsman, as, it's, as the desk is called, the ombudsman of the public service, mm -hmm. you will see that it says it is to prevent, um, protect, I should say, protect civilian rights. Now, this sounds like a very <laughs> intimidating term mm -hmm. that I'm pr protecting rights. But in actual fact, and in actual fact, that's what I do. But one must recognize, too, that there is a limit to which I can attend. I can recommend, I understand your rights, and I can recommend and see how I can work with the department to solve it. Now, what is the process of actually making a complaint to the Parliamentary Commission office? Like, where, also, where are you located? How can, okay. we, how can I find you? All right. Where can you find me? <laughs> the office of the Parliamentary Commissioner is in the Parliament building. It used mm -hmm. to be the, the Treasury. Where the Treasury is, mm -hmm. that is the office. Since the Treasury has moved to another location, uh, that is the office. It's, there's a big sign, Office of the Parliamentary Commissioner, and you walk in, and uh, there's no reason why you can't see me. I am always in office, so from Monday to Friday, um, office government, same government times, um, you walk in and to have a conversation with me. I, um, I, I was coming to say that I, I have times when I'm not in the office, if I'm mm -hmm. investigating an office, mm -hmm. so there are times when citizens have to wait for me, so they come in. Um, the office attendant will say, the parliamentary commissioner is out for a while, can you come back at 2 o'clock? Because there are times I have to go beyond the, the, the office, out of town, into districts, etc., to do my work. So there are times within the 8 and 4, I'm not in office. But, mm -hmm. but other than personally coming in, do you have a, another preferred way of, co of reaching yourself or communicating with you? For, for example, do you prefer um, a written letter or an email? Actually, the, the law says that any complaint, complaints must be written. Mm -hmm. So people come into the office, if you cannot write, then um, you'll be assisted to fill out a complaint form. Mm -hmm. So the complaint form will ask you your name, your, all your bio data, um, which ministry are you um, complaining about. And I have to tell you that by the time you come to the parliamentary commissioner's office, it's because you have tried to solve it and mm -hmm. you cannot. So on the form, we'll ask you information of how have you tried to solve the problem? Which organization have you spoken to? Who have you spoken to? Things like that. And so, okay, fine, you've come, and we document your um, complaint, and I take it from there. I am in regular contact with the people who complain on the progress of what it is. So what else happens when a, a complaint is made? For example, how is the, how is the investigation conducted? Okay, so by, and, and that is one of the things. The, the <coughs> Parliamentary Commissioner's Office investigates the facts. So you have told me that you have an issue with the Ministry of Education. I have to ascertain that in actual fact your understanding of the issue has some merit. Mm -hmm. That there is really um, some measure of discrimination, of etc. I have to establish that. And uh, once I have done that, I need to go to the relevant authorities with the document so that we can have a discussion on this is the issue, how can we resolve it? Um, well, we might talk about how did this happen? What caused that? What's our next step? How are we going to resolve that? Because I need to get to the um, complainant to say, listen, this is what I have done. 
and sometimes, well, you probably don't have, didn't have a right understanding of what exactly the ministry has done. And this is what the ministry has done, so that you can change your mind about the complaint. Or if indeed your complaint is valid, then what is our next step? Okay. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but sure. we're due for a break, and we'll pick it up right back where we left off. This is Issues and Answers. I'm Jacques Ingsud Compton. We'll be right back after this. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm Jacques Kingston Compton, your host, and with me is Dr. Husbands Mathre, Parliamentary Commissioner. Now, uh, before we went to the break, you were talking about the investigation process. Yes, and I was saying that it's a process of one, establishing the fact, and two, tr um, with the relevant ministry department, um, trying to resolve the matter if indeed the complaint is valid. I want to say too that I do not investigate any matters regarding the police. Our constitution has a police complaints department, accommodates a complaint department. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes to me regarding an issue with the police, um, my process is then to refer the matter to the complaints commission of the, of the police department. Um, the matter cannot be investigated if it is matters that are civil or criminal proceedings. Mm -hmm. I cannot inv investigate um, matters of siblings. There's an issue if two siblings quarreling over land mm -hmm. or border mm -hmm. dispute, etc. <coughs> These are not matters. It's the ombudsman for the mm -hmm. public sector. Right. So you don't deal with civil, um, at civil all. law matters? At okay. all, at all, at all. Um, the office does not deal with that. Mm -hmm. I, and uh, what we can and cannot do, there are a list of issues that we can and cannot do. But once it's a public service, my first um, part of call is to establish that the complaint is actually valid and factual. Do you ever, ever have issues where, the, at least to the complainant's point of view, the issue has not been resolved? What, what happens then? I do have issues that have not been resolved for years. Um, I have recently had a matter that I had to re refer to the legal aid department mm -hmm. because uh, um, my office is not equipped with r such skills as a legal aid or legal advisor, etc. So sometimes things are matters that have gone on for years and the parliamentary commissioner um, cannot resolve that. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the public service, so take it to the legal aid. And uh, could you talk a little bit, about, I found the history of the Parliamentary Commission quite fascinating. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, the position of a Parliamentary Commissioner has been in our Constitution, the St. Lucia Constitution Order 1978. Hmm. The position was not established until 1981, although I must say and confess that the enabling legislation didn't come into force until 1982. Um, 1981, we had Mr. Hunter Fassois, our first parliamentary commissioner, and he stayed in the post for 10 years. So he was there from 1981 to 19, 1991. 19, yes, 81 to 91. Mm -hmm. Followed by Dame Lawrence Laura, who came in in 1995. Followed by Mr. Selwyn Vincent, he had mm. been the former Labour Commissioner. Unfortunately, his untimely death while in office. Mm -hmm. um, and after him was appointed Mr. Madison Stanislas, 
followed by Mr. Johnson Snack, and he here I am, your humble servant. Excellent. And uh, you met, I believe you mentioned uh, privacy a while ago. Could you talk a little bit about how the, the matters that you deal with are kept absolutely Absolutely private. confidential. There is no matter that will be public. The legislation, enabling legislation, um, makes it, I have to say impossible, but uh, <laughs> you cannot, everybody who works in the Parliamentary Commissioner's Office has mm -hmm. taken an oath in front of the Speaker of the House, and part of that oath is the secrecy of all documents, information that comes to this office. So all matters handled by the Parliamentary Commissioner can never be public office. However, there is, a, if there is a matter that the Parliamentary Commissioner feels that needs to be tabled before Parliament, mm -hmm. then a special report can be written, tabled before Parliament, and once it's tabled before Parliament, then it becomes a public document. Now, you also mentioned a lot of interesting initiatives that you have for the future. Could you speak a little bit about that? I first want to say that I, I think the Parliamentary Commissioner's office is such an important office um, that, I, one, I don't think it should be centrally in castries. There are issues around the island, and um, I believe we need to decentralize. And if we think of north, south, east, and west, we should have an office in Viewfort, an office in Denry, an mm -hmm. office in Soufre, so that matters of citizens in all areas should be attended to. Um, that is one of the things. Right now, I think knowledge of the office or the role of the parliamentary commissioner is not well either understood or known. So I have taken an initiative to go to schools and talk about the rules. And this is why we are here today, because I think citizens must know that there is a forum where they can be heard. Um, I think we need the understanding of, and, and actually there has been a, a case where um, a citizen felt that, with the OECS, that he had not been fairly treated as, as an OECS citizen. Mm -hmm. However, the legislation does not allow me to deal with OECS matters, with anything outside of the local central government. Mm -hmm. So there is not an, an ombudsman to deal with OECS matters. So there's another thing, I can't deal with regional matters at all, at mm -hmm. all. That's government to government. Right. But um, certainly there, there are many opportunities to expand the office and that is one of my main, uh, one of the things I'd like to see established, that we have offices other than just castries. Um, we have had blind people come to my office from Denry. I have had people in wheelchairs come to me from, a gentleman in wheelchair came to me from Viewfort. And I think, I mean, not only mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the disabled, but mm -hmm. just get citizens. This is a citizen's desk. Mm -hmm. And just get it accessible to everybody. The Constitution says that the Parliamentary Commissioner can investigate complaints brought either by the senator, by, by government minister, parliamentarians, by citizens. And the Parliamentary Commissioner can also, of his or her own discretion, investigate matters of injustice that he or she sees. So that's, um, I, I want to make this available mm -hmm. in, in my work plan for the next couple of years. That is interesting. That is, that, well, this has indeed been a, a, an enlightening conversation. Thank you. I thank you very much for coming to the GIS studios for this episode of Issues and Answers. I am Jacques Kingston Compton. You've been watching Issues and Answers. I'm here with Dr. Rosemary Husbands Mathre, the Parliamentary Commission. I hope you enjoyed our show for today and tune in to next time.